Shabbat Shalom. When my father was 18 years old, his mother became very ill. She had diabetes and she hid it from everybody. And she continued to live not according to what the doctors were telling her. And it was looking very dire. And a few years later, she passed away. And I shared this because my father, he shares his story often because it was a defining moment in his life. And it's one of the big questions of our lives. How do we respond to death, especially untimely death, but all death? When our reality is shattered and we have to face that strange fact of existence that we are only here for a limited amount of time. We do not know how long and the people we love and care for and have such strong physical and emotional bonds with and spiritual bonds with can leave us at any moment. And we do not know where they go we do, not, we do not know why it all happens, or even if why is the right question to ask. And Judaism's response is clear. The why and what happens are perhaps less so, but Judaism gives us rituals, mourning and yard site and shloshim and kadesh and shiva. And on some level, it has always been that way. And this is what our parsha Acharimot, after the death of the children of Aaron, is about. Because Aaron's sons were killed on the day of the inauguration of the tabernacle. Imagine. They brought an Ezra, a strange fire. And the Torah says they were killed in their coming close to God. So why did it happen? And who was at fault? Was it completely bad? Was it a punishment, mistake, the power of God? We do not know. We do not know where they went. No words for all of it. And Aaron, their father, on this joyous day of his installment, silent, bent in grief. And so in response, God gives Moses Yom Kippur, the most elaborate ritual of Judaism. And the high priest Aaron, what was he to do? He was to change his clothes and put on pure clothes over and over and take ritual baths and make difficult, challenging rituals. He had to balance the coal pan in one hand with the incense before entering the Holy of Holies. He had to sprinkle blood a certain way and required so much of him. And Aaron was to go through all of this. To what purpose? What was this all about? It was to bring him on this day and on all future Yom Kippur's, some kind of relief. And Yom Kippur is a day of atonement. And atonement is a form of at one by returning to unity, returning to oneness, returning to purity, feeling whole within ourselves. There was a way for Aaron to connect, and each one of us to connect back to our higher selves after we go through the incredibly challenging emotions of death, especially an untimely death, to grief, to shock, to wrenching sadness, horrible things that no one should have to deal with. All of us do. Notice how God, through ritual, gave Moses' brother Aaron a way of coping with his son's death, a way of marking and responding to the great loss, a way to purify to clear away, but also keep focus and aware and to do what he knew how to do. And it was just what Aaron needed in that moment, what we all need. And because as we know, the rituals were not just for him. In the end, he was atoning not just for himself, he was atoning, atoning for all of Israel, for the Levites, for his family. And he was purifying and bringing everyone to oneness. So what did he do with that silent anger he was carrying? He went in to meet God in the Holy of Holies. And then he came out and he brought that answer to everyone, a wordless answer. 
And for us, Yom Kippur has become a day of thinking and of reflecting, a long day, asking those big questions. And for Aaron, who is Aaron? Aaron is the one who always followed the orders in the family. We don't really know that much about him, except at some point after the burning bush, God tells Aaron to go help Moses, his brother, and he does. And he speaks for his sibling. He's always there in the background. And Aaron gave his life to Moses and to God. And we can imagine as he was going through these rituals and focused, he was also thinking about everything, about his family, his wife, what she was going through his relationship to his soul, to his God, when he was struggling with pain and anger. And in the end, all of it, the ritual, the preparation, the thinking, it took him somewhere new. And he realized that he was both cursed and blessed. And in the end, the passing of a close person, especially an untimely death, is a shattering. And it makes us think about all of it. What are we doing here? What is it about? What was that relationship about for me? And what could I have done differently? A hard question to avoid in such moments. And it gives our other relationships ultimately more power, our relationships with our children, with our relatives, with our friends, with our wider community. And all that inner work takes us to some place new, it births us a new life. And it's also a test of our community, of how a community responds to death, the help and support, and to deal with the uncomfortableness of death. It's very uncomfortable with the emotions of those who are mourning. And all of Israel eventually participated in Yom Kippur with Aaron. And they were all uplifted. And they thought, let's do it again. We're still doing it. Yom Kippur, thinking about impermanence, thinking about life and how our work dealing with this very difficult part of being a human being can transform our families, our communities, and beyond. When my father's mother passed away, he gravitated towards his new uncle, Rabbi Shlomo Karlabach, who married his youngest aunt. And Shlomo became his rabbi. And soon thereafter, my father hung up his stock trading certificate and his Porsche. And he started to ask himself, what is this life all about? And that question led to many life events and changes, including probably my standing here before you. It was a purification of self. And now he speaks about that very difficult moment as an opportunity a curse, a blessing, a truth, a sadness, a crucial step in his life journey, a moment of profound personal transformation. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>